The pyramidal tracts. The pyramidal tracts are one of the descending tracts of the spinal cord and these descending tracts of the spinal cord are formed by motor nerve fibers, those arise from the brain and they descend into the spinal cord. And these tracts carry the motor impulses from brain to the spinal cord. So the pyramidal tracts are the descending tracts. That means they carry motor impulses from brain to the spinal cord. These pyramidal tracts are also called as the corticospinal tracts. The pyramidal tracts or the corticospinal tracts were the first tracts to be found in the man. And these tracts are concerned with the voluntary motor activities of the body. So they are two pyramidal tracts or the corticospinal tracts. That means the anterior corticospinal tract and the lateral corticospinal tract. These are named as the pyramidal tracts because while running from the cerebral cortex towards the spinal cord, these two tracts give the appearance of a pyramid on the upper part of the anterior surface of the medulla oblongata. Hence, it is named as the pyramidal tract. Here, this is the medulla oblongata and in the medulla oblongata, the anterior and lateral pyramidal tracts looks like a pyramid. Now let's know about the nerve fibers. All the nerve fibers of these pyramidal tracts are present since birth. But myelination of these fibers is completed in about 2 years after the birth. The pyramidal tracts on each side have more than a million of fibers and about 70% of these fibers are large and myelinated that having a diameter of 4 to 22 microns. And these large fibers of the pyramidal tract have a tendency to disappear at the old age. As these tracts are concerned with the voluntary movement, the disappearance of these fibers in the old age causes the automatic shivering movements in the old age. And you should remember, the fibers of these pyramidal tracts are the axons of the upper motor neurons. Now let's talk about the origin. The fibers of the pyramidal tracts arise from three areas. The first area is the Jane cell or the bed cell or these are also called as the pyramidal cells. Those lie in the precentral gyrus of the motor cortex and these are situated in area 4 that is the primary motor area of frontal lobe. And the second area of the origin are the areas of the motor cortex. Those are the pre-motor area that is area 6 and the supplementary motor areas and the third area of the origin is from the parts of the frontal lobe and then another area of the origin is from the somatosensory area of the parietal lobe and it is believed that 30% of the fibers arise from the area 4 that is the primary motor area and the supplementary motor area that is from here that is the primary area 4 and the supplementary that is 30 percent and another 30 percent from the pre-motor area that is area 6 so this is the remaining 30 percent that is the pre-motor area area 6 and the remaining 40 percent of the fibers are believed to arise from the somatosensory area that is area 3 1 and 2 constitute about the 40 percent of fibers and all these above fibers form fibers from the upper motor neurons for the motor pathway now coming to the course so this course is important it is from the corona radiata then it goes to the internal capsule then it passes into the pons then to medulla and into the spinal cord it terminates so let's learn about the course in all these areas the first area is the corona radiata. So after taking the origin, these nerve fibers run downwards in a diffused manner through the white matter of the cerebral hemisphere and they converge in a form of fan-like structure along with the ascending fibers which project from the thalamus to the cerebral cortex and this fan-like structure is called as the corona radiata. So this corona radiata is nothing but the fibers projecting in fan shape and they contain the ascending fibers from the thalamus and also the descending fibers 
from the cerebral cortex. And after the corona ray data, these fibers pass on to the internal capsule. So these fibers are the fan-shaped corona radiator. This structure is the thalamus. This is the internal capsule and their nucleus that is the lenticular nucleus. So now in the internal capsule, while these fibers are passing downwards towards the brainstem, the corona radiator converges in the form of internal capsule. It is situated in between the thalamus and the caudate nucleus on the medial side and the lenticular nucleus onto the lateral side. So the narrowing of this corona radiator in the form of internal capsule is located here and it is situated between the thalamus and caudate nucleus on the medial side and the lenticular nucleus on its lateral side. And now let's come to the pons. So this is the pons. The fibers descend down through the internal capsule, midbrain and the pons. While descending through the spawns, the fibers are divided into different bundles by the nucleus of the pons. At the lower border of the spawns, the fibers are grouped once again into a compact bundle and then they descend down into the medulla oblongata. So remember, due to the nucleus in the pons, these fibers divide into separate bundles and again, so these diffuse fibers again form a compact bundle and they pass into the medulla oblongata. Now they go into the medulla oblongata. This compact bundle of the corticospinal fibers give the appearance of a pyramid that is into the anterior surface of the upper part of the medulla. So they are named as the pyramidal tracts and at the lower border of the medulla oblongata, the pyramidal tract on each side is divided into two bundles that is of unequal sizes. So this is important to remember. The two bundles are formed and about 80% of the fibers from each side cross to the opposite side. So you can see this large bundle. This is the 80% and they cross onto the other side, opposite side. And this thick bundle of the opposite side pass onto its opposite side. While crossing this midline, the fibers of both the sides form the pyramidal decussation. So the 80% of the fibers of each side cross together, they form the pyramidal decussation. So in the medulla oblongata, the pyramidal decussation is formed. That is due to the crossage of the 80% or the large group of fibers onto the opposite side to the midline. And now the course is into the spinal cord. The fibers which cross the midline and they form the pyramidal decussation, they descend through the posterior part of the lateral white column of the spinal cord. So this is the lateral white column. So these 80% are the fibers of the pyramidal decussation. They descend through the posterior part of the lateral white column of the spinal cord. This is the posterior part. This bundle of the crossed fibers is called as the crossed pyramidal tract or the lateral corticospinal tract. And these are also called as indirect corticospinal tract. These are called crossed because they cross the midline. And these are also called as lateral because they descend through the posterior part of the lateral white column of the spinal cord. And the remaining 20% of the fibers which do not cross the opposite side but they descend down through the anterior white column of the spinal cord. And remaining 20% of fibers do not cross the midline of the opposite side but they descend down through the anterior white column of the spinal cord. So this is the anterior white column. And these fibers are called as the uncrossed pyramidal tract or the anterior corticospinal tract or the direct corticospinal tract. So these are 20% and these are 80%. And remember this tract is well marked in the cervical segment of the spinal cord. Now let's talk about the termination. All the fibers of the pyramidal tracts both crossed and the uncrossed, they terminate into the motor neurons of the anterior grey horn either directly or through the internuclear neurons. So both the crossed and uncrossed fibers terminates into the anterior grey horn either directly or through indirectly that is due to the internucinal neurons. So this is the grey horn and all the fibers terminate directly or indirectly to the anterior grey horn. This is the interneuron and this is the alpha motor neuron and the spinal nerve. The pyramidal tract fibers terminate on both the alpha motor neurons 
and the beta motor neurons. The neurons that give origin to the fibers of the pyramidal tract are called as the upper motor neurons and the anterior motor neurons in the spinal cord are called as the lower motor neurons. Now coming to the function, the pyramidal tracts are concerned with voluntary movements of the body and the fibers of the pyramidal tracts transmit the motor impulses from the motor area of the cerebral cortex to the anterior motor neurons of the spinal cord. And these two tracks are responsible for the fine skilled movement of the body. And now let's talk about the effects of the lesion. The lesion of the neurons of motor cortex and the fibers of the pyramidal tracks is called as the upper motor neuron lesion. And lesion of pyramidal fibers occur mostly in the stroke. That can be due to a cardiovascular accident or due to hemorrhage or a thrombus. During such lesions, many extra pyramidal fibers are also damaged along with the pyramidal fibers. So the effects on the lesion are on the voluntary movements and these voluntary movements are very much affected. Initially, there will be a loss of voluntary movements in the extremities. Later, it involves the other parts of body like hip and the shoulder and on the muscle tone. That is, the muscle tone is increased leading to spasticity and these muscles are also paralyzed. This type of paralysis of the muscles is called as the spastic paralysis because it have the spasticity. And hypotonia occurs in pure pyramidal tract lesion which is very rare and the reflexes, all the superficial reflexes of the body are lost and the deep reflexes are exaggerated. So remember, superficial reflexes are lost and the deep reflexes are highly exaggerated. An abnormal plantar reflex, that is called as the Babinski sign, is present. So you should remember the Babinski sign is present. And the lesion at different level of this pyramidal can also lead to different clinical conditions. So the lesion at the cerebral cortex leads to hypertonia that means increase in tone, spasticity and contralateral monoplegia that is paralysis of one limb because of the crosses of the fibers or it can also cause the contralateral hemiplegia that means the paralysis of one side of the body and the lesion at the internal capsule can result in the contralateral hemiplegia that means paralysis of the one side of the body and contralateral hemiplegia paralysis of one side of the body and the lesion at the brain stem not only pyramidal tract but they also include other structures like the sixth and seventh cranial nuclei so this lesion results in the contralateral hemiparesis that means weakness of the muscles on one side of the body along with the sixth and seventh cranial nerve paralysis and the lesion at the spinal cord that is the unilateral lesion of the lateral corticospinal tract that is at the upper cervical segment that causes the ipsilateral hemiplegia and bilateral lesion causes the quadraplegia that is paralysis of all four limbs and paralysis of the respiratory muscles. The bilateral lesions of these fibers in thoracic and lumbar segments results in the paraplegia. Para meaning many and plegia meaning paralysis of the limbs. So, paralysis of both the lower limbs occur during the bilateral lesions of these fibers in the thoracic and lumbar segments. And in this condition, the paralysis of respiratory muscle does not occur. So guys, this is all about the pyramidal tract. If you like my video, do subscribe to my channel. And do look at some of my recent videos and playlists.